what is going on cultivate family i hope you are all doing good wherever it is that you're listening to this from today today i am joined by one of my very good friends happy who some of you may follow or have seen in my post she's known as happy lifts we talk about her journey into strongman we talk about ed recovery we talk about hypermobility biomechanics and a lot of the barriers and challenges that she faced as a person of color getting into weightlifting lifting weights in general and taking up space in the gym i'm so glad that i finally got her on so i really hope you enjoy it before we get into the main episode, I just want to let you know I'm opening four slots next week to chat to anybody that might be interested in working with me on their training on nutrition on a one-to-one basis as I'm going to have a few spaces coming up this month, which means I can have a few more people in Fast Culture Club, which is awesome. So if you've been thinking about kickstarting your training journey and getting a bit of extra support with nutrition and working out this summer, Let's have a conversation about it and I will let you know if I can help you. And if I can't help you, I will absolutely send you to someone that can. So if you fancy having a chat about it and figuring out what a starting point might look like for you, I do that with everyone free of charge. There is no obligation to sign up. We just have a chat, map out a rough plan. And then if you want to continue to work with me after that, we crack on. So just head to the little form link in the show notes, fill that in, tell me a little bit about yourself and your journey so far and then I'll hit you back straight away and we'll take it from there. Okay, let's get into it. This is my good friend Happy Lips chatting to me on the Cultivate podcast. We met in a coffee shop and then realised we was both PTs and a little bit weird and then we became friends. And the rest is history. I just want to start with how did you get into fitness? What was like your first steps into it like? Because I don't think we've ever spoken about this. In high school, I liked athletics, javelin, shot put, discus. Those were all my favorite. Um, I tried running. I, I was in cross country. That wasn't my strength. At one point, I was in every single extracurricular sport that I could be in. But then looking back, that wasn't for a healthy reason. Um, disordered eating reasons. So it's like, oh, sports. Yes. And I won an award for being like really dedicated for being in so many sports clubs. And I was like, yeah, you're giving me an award for being unwell. Thank you. Yeah. So your behaviors around using exercise for like energy expenditure ended up getting rewarded. Where do you think that all kind of came from? Was there any kind of like pressures put on you to, you know, maintain like a really low body weight or a really lean physique or anything or was it something that you felt like you kind of put on yourself it just came from me i just put it on myself it's interesting how like we can be that young and like put that on ourselves because i definitely did it as well and i don't really know where it come from and the only thing i can think about is like almost like influential figures and diet culture chat that's the only thing i can really pinpoint it for me i, I don't know if that's the same for you yeah. like what you saw in magazines as well and like well the 90s the 90s were bad for that sort of pressure yeah, i think the 2000s were as well to be honest it got a bit better and now it does seem to be getting They're slightly run back around again diet right? culture again yeah full circle did you kind of realize that you had a problem then with like disordered eating and over exercising. I don't think I realized until like sixth form, which was quite a while later. I was referred to CAMS, but that was that was just like m- just mental health. Mental health being in the toilet reason for being referred. And what support did you get? So this is like that weird point where like it was my first experience of getting support and it was a bad one. So I think I think she was like a psychologist. And she just, she didn't believe anything I said to her. And I was like, so I'm a young person coming to you and like sharing all this really vulnerable stuff. And you're like, where's your evidence? It's very strange. How did you go from that into like finding strong women and, and CrossFit? Well, there was a long gap between then and not getting the support I needed to strong man. Because in between I got really ill. I've, and I do feel like it was from being failed by the system because then I went back and was like yeah I still need help because 
that other one didn't believe me. And then she discharged me because she was like, yeah, I don't think it can help you. Did you end up getting the right help? Towards the end of it, at one point, I was in this room with like this whole mental health team. So like psychologist, doctor, it was like five different people all sat in front of me, giving all this feedback. And it was basically, we can't give you the support you need because you're not ill enough. And I was like, oh, okay, great. Again, fantastic. Great. I'll just continue being ill then. And then I got some support through my GP and it was weirdly just exactly what I needed. It was this like mental health nurse practitioner who would meet with me every week. She helped me because she had a background in helping people with disordered eating. She didn't do that anymore, but then she did for me. That's awesome. So you finally, finally got there after yeah. a bunch of people just being like, you're not unwell enough. Yeah. How do they even decide? It's like on a scale of severity. Yeah. And if it, they were like, you're just on the cusp. And I was like, well, if I'm just on the cusp, is it that bad enough? Though? So, right. It's like when you're deficient of vitamin D, but you're just on the cusp of like an okay level. So your GP's just like, yeah, it's fine. But they don't tell you that, that it's like slightly low. It's like, it's almost like that, isn't it? What, what did that recovery then look like for you? Five years long. And some of it was like, getting to the gym once I was allowed I mean they couldn't stop me but but like using it as a good thing because I was like oh okay well then I'll like try to gain muscle then but again it was in my head it's like that's a healthier way of doing it right yeah so it still wasn't quite for the right reasons yeah and then it was it was weird because I obviously like tracking you're not really supposed to do that but then they get you to keep a food diary and I'm like isn't that just another form of tracking and in the end because I was being so difficult and she was like, if you don't start following this, you're going to go to hospital. And I was like, oh no, like I can't do that because my family will freak out. Because of course that's what I was worried about, not myself. I was like, oh yeah. no, my family going to freak out. Um, and I went, how about this? We agree that I'm allowed to track macros because then I can like make sure I'm having a, a protein and actually build muscle. And then she was like, oh, I don't want to agree to this, but okay. Okay. That's, that's interesting. So you almost replaced like a food journal with macro tracking. And how did that help? I think it helped because I wasn't eating enough. And so it forced yeah. me to eat more. And then I realized like I was eating nowhere near enough protein. But then when I did and you start to see the gains, that bit almost became addictive because I was like, oh, I want to keep building the gains. In a healthy way or in a in an extreme way, would you say? It was probably still extreme for like several years until I joined that strongman group. I think that's almost normal in a sense with a lot of disordered eating, going from like not eating a lot to then just focusing on exactly what you want to eat to get strong. It's almost like a two extremes and because we're used to the extremes, it's like kind of easy to replace one with another in a sense, because I think I probably did that as well. I'm like, oh, I'm not tracking to make my body smaller. I'm tracking to like put on loads of muscle. And there wasn't almost like any joy in it anymore. It was just purely like transactional. Put the food in the app. Check yeah. how much I could have to eat. And that was it. There was no like joy around food for me at all for like so long. Yeah, because I thought... It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to eat this and enjoy it. It was like, I have to have this and I must have so I can do this. Uh, and then it wasn't until I met that strong man at the gym and he invo invo invited me. <laughs> Don't know what happened to my accent there, but he, he was like, join our gang. And I was like, okay, I'm scared, but okay. And he had to drill it out of me, like stop doing so much because I did a lot of hit. He was like, stop doing more circuits, get off the treadmill. Sometimes it'd come and be like, get off, get off. But then I got stronger from listening to him. Who'd have thought? So was it just like this guy's tough love that kind of like broke the cycle for you? Yeah, it was like him, but like the whole group because they believed in you as well. And like I wasn't used to that. And I was like, oh my goodness, these people think I can do it. And they said I'm strong. That's awesome. So how long, how long did it take you to get out of that? constant tracking intensive cardio cycle and just focus on the strongman stuff i think even that was two years because uh, then i would compete 
in weight categories as well. So many were still tracking. It wasn't until they did some stuff without the categories. So for those who don't know anything about how Strongman works, can you give us like a very quick overview of like how comps work, how the weight categories work, how you qualify for them and stuff? Well, I mean, I only did local comps, so I didn't have to do any like qualifiers or anything. Yeah. I just had to be part of that group. Training was really intense leading up to the comps and you were put in a weight category depending on your current weight just so like the people in your category are similar weight to you so it, just so it's fair and so I was in like one of the lighter categories because I'd only just recovered I realized I wasn't fully recovered and then like the next weight class up would be heavier but their weights would also be heavier so everything was almost like pound for pound to make it fair yeah and then the sorts of stuff we did was like log press uh, atlas stones yoke farmers walks uh pushing and pulling a vehicle that's pretty cool where does the pulling the vehicle thing come from in strongman like it's awesome um there is plenty of pictures of you doing it is it just because it's like really fucking big i think so i remember like before it was before i even thought about strongman or joining a functional fitness gym i was in this little leisure center gym that was like down the road from where i lived and i was on one of those little sit-down bikes and uh, Will's Strongest Man was on the TV and I'm sure it was Eddie Hall and yeah. they pulled an aeroplane and I was just like, people can do that. <laughs> what? My, 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 like, my mind was blown. So what was the first vehicle that you pulled? Mm, a pickup truck. So the gym that I did my apprenticeship at, which was also where the Strongman competitions were, uh, there was a brand based there called Anarchy Strength and so they had a truck and then at some point we all just decided we'd start pulling and pushing that truck up and down the car park. Is that mostly legs? I'd say mainly legs and we did a yeah. lot of sled work. Like half of that gym was just a gigantic sled track and we did a lot of sled. I still remember this big guy called Andrew. He weighed over 100 kilo and he would sit on a sled and we'd have to push it. That prepared us. What was like the vibe like in a strong person gym compared to what the vibe would be like in like a usual like commercial gym, like your pure gyms, your JDs? What's, what's the difference? So different, really different, really friendly. Like you walk in, you don't get ignored because everybody wants to talk to you and they want to like bring you in. It's not unusual for there to be like sweets and donuts and stuff like that oh, just yeah. there because it's like strongman food. I love that. How would you say it compares to like going into a CrossFit box? Because obviously you've also been a CrossFitter. Would you say it's more friendlier or would you say it's kind of similar? Kind of similar. As long as the box isn't like elitist. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Have you ever seen any of that elitism in, in Strongman when you were a part of it? Or did it tend to just be pretty sound? It tended to be pretty friendly. I mean, apart from after that gym, I was invited to another gym called Functional Strength Institute, where some of the big Strongman comps happened. And I was invited to do a strong woman club because of my background. Um, and this group that were based there just decided that they didn't like me and my colleague or the group that we had created. So there was a bit of friction there. I was there for a while, but yeah, that was, that was part of the reason I left. And it was a shame because yeah. we helped so many people do their first strong woman competition like ever. You've like, you've mentioned a lot in our friendship, how like when you got into like strong woman and ollie lifting, that it was kind of almost like unheard of in your culture for like a woman to lift heavy weight was that almost like a bit of a barrier for you of like family and friends and stuff when you were getting into all the strongman stuff yeah i don't think i even realized the barrier was there until i started doing it because when i was training for my first strong man comp at that first gym i didn't realize but these distant relatives I don't even know were ringing my dad and saying like why are you letting her do this you know she's gonna start posting like half naked pictures online first of all if I want to do that I can and it was like you shouldn't let her why are you letting her did your dad stand up for you and like support you in doing all the strong woman stuff so me and my dad have a bit of a weird relationship we're not close 
so he probably didn't, but he probably also didn't say anything negative. But my mum supported me and one of my aunties and my sister. So you did you did have people in your corner that were like, yeah, get it, go and do it. Yeah, because like when I was doing the comp as well, I didn't know who was going to come apart from like my partner, Randy, and a couple of my best friends. And then towards the end, when they were giving out the trophies, I saw one of my aunties in the audience and I was like, oh, fam, like families. That's awesome. And what was it kind of like going into those spaces that are basically predominantly male and predominantly white? Did you ever feel like you weren't able to take up space because the whole time I've known you, you're like driving determination to do everything that you want exactly the way you want to do it, regardless of what people say, is like incredible. Like you always take up the space that you deserve. And it, I want to know where that comes from. Was it a struggle early on or have you just always felt like, yeah, I'm fucking getting it and I'm doing it because I deserve to? I think it was a struggle at first, especially like going to that functional fitness gym and then looking around and just being like, why does no one look like me here? Like, where are they all? And then on the comp days, it, it was the same again. Brown people anywhere? No. So yeah, I just, I had to learn to take up space and then obviously the backlash from certain relatives I was like right need to block that person out but then there was also this like stubborn want to prove them wrong I've never let go of that stubbornness please never do it's it's the best do you even think that's changed however many years on or is there still like a huge lack of diversity in strongman comps I think there is a change now um I remember yeah. a couple of people messaging me on Instagram like years later and they were getting a strong woman and they were like oh like I'm Indian too and I'm doing strong woman look at me pull this bus and I was like wow that's amazing and obviously like a lot of the work you do is to help other women of color lift heavy weights and do you find that they're almost hesitant to do it at first and they're driven to more like socially acceptable forms of movement that are deemed socially acceptable by someone else? Yeah, I feel like culture is still a barrier. There's things like I hadn't even thought about as well, though. Working with so many diverse clients now in Leeds, there's, they'll go to Zumba classes like that that aren't weights because they think, oh, well, weightlifting isn't for women, but especially not south asian women and then say they do start working with me then there's a bit of a battle of like oh who's gonna look after the kid oh i need to ask my partner if i can come and i'm like oh can you not just just go just no i was like oh this is one aspect i didn't think of yeah because it's not something you've had to deal with that side of things because obviously you don't ask your partner to go to the gym yeah or he's messaging me asking me how long i'm going to be and i'm like one more hour one more amrap those clients that come to you that struggle with like what's expected of them and like what gender norms are put on them with their kids like do they ever find a way out of it or is it just forever a battle for them based on like their family values and like their cultural beliefs and it, it depends i mean some of them are so deep in it that they can't really get out but then at least the gym's like a nice release and like an escape um but there are some like through the power the <laughs> power of like being united uh so when they come to the classes like because everyone's empowering them and then it's actually giving them the confidence to say you know what i deserve this time to come to the gym We're like could you respect that and it's worked that's awesome so then they maybe go home and set a boundary yeah which they didn't realize that they could do that's awesome. I want to talk about hypermobility because you are hypermobile and uh, we did a comp together a couple of weeks ago now. We had to do a strict press. We had to build to a heavy three reps of a strict press. And I thought at one point your elbow was going to pop out of this socket. I think the whole comp did. And obviously that was like a sign of like hypermobility. When did you realize you were hypermobile and how does it affect your training? We've had Penny come on here and talk about it before. So it'd be awesome to hear stuff from like another person's point of view. Because so many people that listen to this podcast are hypermobile. I'm actually trying to think of when, because it wasn't at the beginning of my fitness journey. Because I used to stretch a lot. I used to do like yoga and thought that I wasn't flexible, which is wild. But in some areas I'm not. It just depends whether that joint is hypermobile or not. 
So, so where are you mostly hypermobile? Um, my shoulders and my elbows. And how does that affect like day-to-day training? It depends who you surround yourself with. So at first, as good as Strongman was, there aren't many hypermobile strongmen. And I can see why. Like imagine doing a circus dumbbell with hypermobile shoulders. It would just fall off. But we did we we noticed issues. I think it was coming up to like the third comp where he started putting in a little bit of ollie lifting and my knee just kept like not even just caving in but like wildly jutting inwards and couldn't control my knee. But then the answer just was, okay, you're not allowed to do that movement. And I was like, yeah, but why? And like, I should I need to learn how I can actually deal with this. When did you start to realize you could train despite being hypermobile and like what adaptions did you have to make in your training? Uh, I think it was once I'd moved from that first gym to the second one, I was invited to like shadow the ollie lifting classes. And then I also did my level two British weightlifting. So there was a lot of information coming at me, but then you also learnt the movements yourself. And that's when we realized my shoulders were just like wild. Cause I was like, I don't know why I struggle with the snatch so much. And it's like, why are your hands all the way back there and how? So it was just getting given tips of like, right. So if it's going that far back, we need to add a bit more tension up there. And then uh, people would poke me in the back and be like, do you work on this bit? So is it almost like a combination of building the strength to surround the hypermobile joints and being quite careful? with ranges of motion, would you say, that has sort of helped you continue to, like, progress? Yeah. And there were some things in Strongman that did aggravate it because, like, these move so much, I'd get tendonitis because, like, it had gone so far out of its normal range that then my tendons would, like, flare up. So after the Strongman comps, I would just, I'd be, like, covered in tiger balm and, like, tubey grip which is not good like it's well you don't want to rely on your tendons anyway but as i got stronger i could definitely have more control over my shoulders because i've built around the joint yeah and then added load to the tendons but in a more controlled way rather than just letting them do what they want yeah so a bit more a bit more sort of techism planning is going to be needed when it comes to your training if someone is hypermobile and they want to start lifting weight but things keep dislocating, things are in the wrong position. What are like the first steps that they could take to actually find out how they can work with their hypermobility? Get a professional to help you. So like a coach that has some awareness of hypermobility or maybe they even specialize in it. I don't want to use the word bad because it's on a spectrum. So let's say on the spectrum, it's more towards like Elon. I would recommend getting a physio. Even like looking into biomechanics a little bit on a really basic level can help it's the mechanics of your body so like the skeletal and muscular mechanics so since starting strongman which was what like eight years ago i had this hip pain um i kept going over on my ankle and spraining it over and over again i had this like winged right scapula and i didn't understand how to sort it out so I spent so much money on physios and different sports massage therapists and they'd all say different stuff to me and then just through learning a bit of biomechanics I've figured out what caused all of it and it's getting better and my hip pain's gone it's like magic that's awesome it's also how I've been using my running recovery as well just spending hours in YouTube looking up running biomechanics. And I guess this is the stuff that me and you nerd out on that like people that aren't necessarily coaches might not enjoy, but even just having a little bit of biomechanical knowledge about how running works and how you hold yourself, how your posture is, how your legs turn over has like completely changed the way I run since I broke my ankle and Again, I don't know a lot about biomechanics aside from, you know, the the more surface level stuff that helps me help people. But digging into the biomechanics stuff with running, the little bit that I've learned has completely transformed the way I run and allowed me to run pain free. So it's definitely worth looking into for sure on a surface level. And then if you're full hyper focused like us too, then you might end up in a big spider hole with it in, in a positive way. Yeah.
that's how I describe it. I'm like, it was like a rabbit hole. I started just scratching at the surface and I fell completely down the hole. Is there anything that your hypermobility now stops you from doing or do you find you're able to do, do and try everything now? I feel like I am able to do and try everything now because I've strengthened everything. Um, just the only thing I'm not doing at the minute is running because of the way my foot strikes the floor. I just need to sort out some of my left foot issues before I reintroduce it because all I'm going to do is make my hip worse. So a small break, a small break from running while you rehab the foot. Yeah. Mate, thank you so much for coming on and talking a little bit about your journey. Where can people find you if they want to look you up after listening to this? I'm pretty sure I'm called Happy Lifts on everything. And there we go. Thank you so much for coming on. Happy. Hope you all enjoyed that. Have an awesome rest of your week, Cultivate Family, and we will catch up next week. Take it easy, everyone. That is me out. Bye.